adore you, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. Fill this temple. Fill it with your Holy Spirit. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. All we need, Father, is you this evening, God. We need your word, your spirit, your truth this evening, oh God. We thank you, oh God, today that you are God alone. You are God alone this evening. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Jesus. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. 
of the living God, we praise and thank you, Father, for your spirit, your presence. We thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your abiding presence. Your abiding presence. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit, your Holy Spirit, revealing unto us, Lord, the things of God, Lord. The things of God. We thank you for revelation knowledge, O oh God, that keeps us going forward. We thank you, Father, for this beautiful moment. We can gather and fellowship in your presence. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people, the commitment that they have made to be in your presence. Thank you for blessing us today, giving us a wonderful day. Thank you for health and strength, and thank you, Lord, for giving us your grace and your strength that is keeping us day by day, Lord. For without you, we cannot make it, Lord, in this world. We just thank you that we have you on our side. We give you praise and glory, Lord. Continue to abide with us with your holy presence, and teach us from your word tonight, Lord. In your spirit, minister to us gracefully, Lord, as we open our hearts to receive tonight. We receive it in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. The Lord bless you real good. Amen. And, and, and you know, I, I don't know why you like to sit like scatter shots, you know. Just come closer. It's always nice to come closer. You feel more warm when you come closer. All right? You feel that warm, that warm fellowship when you come closer. Come closer. All right? Amen. That's good. You like Marilyn, come closer. <laughs> Pleasant good evening. All you young fellas in the back there, come closer to come. I need to get your ears. Come. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Amen. Pleasant good evening. And I hope that you had some rest. You got rested up. Amen. And ready to receive tonight. And it'll be simple tonight. Just, we're just going to casually just move along and, and hear what the Lord has to say to us and edify us tonight, all right? Amen. And you, you, you'll hear something tonight that is going to, your, your spirit will be a witness to what I'm going to say tonight, just because of what I said this morning, and you look around and you'll see. Okay? You look around and see. When, in fact, when the Bible talks about Moses speaking to the children of the Israel, if something happened because of the hardness of their heart, because of the hardness of their heart, something happened. And you'll see tonight what happened. All right? I'm glad you, you returned tonight. I'm glad you returned, all right? Uh, I'm glad, if, if you notice, this side is almost full and this side is almost empty. So I'm glad you all are wise tonight. I'm glad you're a wise version, right? And a few on this side. All right? Amen? The rest is going to get oil. All right? The rest is going to get oil. People just don't listen. They just don't get it. You know? But you know when they'll get it? When they get it, will be the time they want to do it. And when they want to do it, they'll have no time to do it. Watch and you'll see. The days of regrets are coming. The days of regrets are coming. The Bible said there will be a famine for the word of God. The days of regrets are coming. The only way, the only proof that people are learning is regrets. When you have a regret, it's because you learned something could have been done better. You wish you had the opportunity to do it better, or knowledge to do it better. When you have regrets. But nevertheless, we want to do a study tonight where you do part one tonight. We'll continue. And we're talking about transference of spirit. Transference of spirit, very, very important in today's world. In this 21st century, with all the electronic media and all the texting and all the uh, 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 iPad and AirPod and Nosepad and Moldpad and all the pads they have, and the computers and all these electric communications today, we know there is a serious transference of spirit. And it can, messages and news and things can reach people so fast now. It's amazing. It seems as though Facebook is everybody's God. When you have a problem, run to Facebook and put it on Facebook. People, when you have a problem, you get your face in this book. 
Amen? You get your face in this book. Cancel your Facebook. You, live, you, you were living before that came about. And you were communicating. You, you didn't need that. Most of the things that they have, that we don't need it. We could live without it. We just don't want to. Because we are so accustomed to convenience. But nevertheless, all that is transference of spirit. We're not going to go into all of that. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And let's learn. There are three things I want you to pick up from, this, from these verses. We will see that God is talking about here the spirit of man, the spirit of the world, and the spirit of God. The spirit of man, the spirit of the world, and the spirit of God. Amen. He says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor e'er heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Watch verse 10. But God had revealed them to us by his spirit. Are we paying attention? God has revealed it to, to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, and watch it now, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit searcheth the things of God. Now let's go again. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of man? So you have the things of God and the things of man. So man knoweth the things of man because of the spirit of man. But the things of God, you think the spirit of man knows that? Watch what it says. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So the things of God are revealed by the spirit of God. The things of man are known by man because of the spirit of man or the spirit that is in man. So you know your spirit, but you don't know the things of God because you need the spirit of God to reveal the things of God. Amen? Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. So we see the spirit of man, the spirit of God, and the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God, we receive that, right? That we might know what? The things that are freely given to us of God. So by the Spirit of God or through the Spirit of God, we understand or we have revealed to us a revelation of the things of God. We know the things of God by the Spirit of God. So you cannot ask the Father for anything without the Spirit. You cannot pray without the Spirit. You cannot pray without Jesus and the Spirit. You understand that? Amen. For the Spirit is the one who helpeth our infirmities when we do not what to pray for or seek God for. He helpeth our infirmities. And whatever we pray and ask God for by His Spirit, for it's not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who made it possible for us to have access to God and access to the Spirit of God. Because when He left this world, He, sent, he said, I'm going to send a comforter, meaning another, another comforter, he was the comforter while he walked here, and he sent another comforter, which is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of liberty. And where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. So we see the Spirit of man, the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of the world in the three verses. Now, the Spirit of man can be transferred, the Spirit of the word can be transferred, and the Spirit of God can be transferred. When we talk about the Spirit of the world, we are talking about Satan, devils, and demons. The Spirit of the world, we are talking about Satan, devils, and demons demons the spirit of god the holy spirit the spirit of man well you know the spirit of man the spirit of man that's what it is right and when we talk about the spirit of man do you know the spirit of, spirit of man can be in i mean troubled in many ways can be affected in many ways and you see examples being set and displayed by human beings men on the whole humanity generally speaking the spirit of man can be anguished. Hmm? Anguish. The spirit of man can be troubled. The spirit of man can be jealous, can be sorrowful, can be hardened, can be stirred, can be contrite, can be broken, can be pro provoked, can be hasty, can be angry, can be haughty, can be humbled, can be wounded, can be vexed, can be proud, can be heavy. All these things are attributed to the spirit of man. Okay, we see he did, no demon possessed there now. S the spirit of man. So you can just get angry if you want to. And blame it on the devil if you want to. You could be anguish in spirit and blame it on the devil if you want to. But it's your spirit. It's, it's your mind and your spirit 
calibrating together. Because you wouldn't get angry or vexed if the mind is right. Come on now. The mind is right. The mind is the mind of Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. You wouldn't get, um, you, let, you wouldn't be controlled by the Spirit. I can think in such a way that I can humble myself. <clears throat> so let's deal a little bit with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was released of, uh, of individuals such as Moses and Joshua and Elijah, David and many others. The Spirit of, of God was released, the Spirit of God was released uh, of men. God took it off men and placed it on other men, the Spirit of God. So think about that. The Spirit of God on you. Okay? God can take from the Spirit of God on you and place it on somebody else. Now, that, that's, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. Now, we cannot, well, find that mind can't understand everything, but follow through and let the Scripture talk for itself, right? So the Spirit of God was released of individuals such as Moses, Joshua, Elijah, David, and two others. Moses on the 70, God took from the 70. To help them build a tabernacle. Of Moses, put on the 70 to help them build a tabernacle. Jesus released the Holy Ghost on the 70 also to help them with the work of the ministry. And those disciples, wasn't even, they, was, they wasn't even saved. They weren't even saved. He breathed on them the Spirit of God. Amen. He released on them the Spirit of God because salvation came after the resurrection. Amen. And so... So the Spirit of God can be taken from one person, put it on the other, can, taken from one, can transfer from one to the next. All right? Because where, the, where you have the Spirit of God, you have the anointing of God. The Spirit of, the Spirit of God and the anointing of God, they're like water and wet. Do you understand that? So when the Bible said God took off the anointing, the anointing was upon Moses, the, your spirit, the spiritual anointing was upon Moses and placed on the 70, upon Jesus, put it on the 70. It, that's what it's talking about, the Spirit of God. All right? No Spirit, no anointing. No Spirit, no anointing. Now, the spirit of man, the spirit of man, now how can a human spirit be transferred from one to another? You know, you can meet somebody, and if that person has a heavy spirit, you can feel the heaviness. You can feel the heaviness in people. You can feel, you can sense the spirit that is on people, the spirit of heaviness. You can sense when somebody has a jealous spirit. You can sense somebody has a Bitter spirit, you can discern it. It's easy to discern. You know why? Because your spirit is accustomed to it. Because you've been like that. You know it. You know, you know it. You know it. When somebody has because you've been that way the same. All right? So most of you, uh, most, of, most of you are not leaders. You are followers. And the reason why you're following somebody, every one of you, whether you're leaders or not, you're following somebody because you are swayed by their spirit. You're swayed by the spirit, by, by the spirit, and so you need to understand that. Okay, all right. You're followers. Why? Because you are swayed by many charis charismatic uh, uh, personalities, and you have your likeness for certain people. You have your dislike for certain people. Now, if you notice the cults, cults, and many religious leaders, you have to ask yourself the question: today, Why? Why religion is is why new religions are rising up, and why cults are, are prospering and and religion are prospering and increasing so rapidly today. Why is Islam increasing so rapidly today? Why is Hinduism spreading in the West so rapidly today? You know, we, we think that in, some, in, in, in America, it was only white folks. You'll be surprised to know how, how Hinduism is sweeping across America. And don't talk about Canada. Don't talk about Canada. Canada become like India just now. You understand? Know and don't talk about London with Pakistanis and, Hind and Hindus. And, I mean, the, this Eastern culture is sweeping across the West and all over Europe. And we see a massive increase. Why? Because people are persuaded. And you can put it persuaded. All right? Why you had this recent uh, attack, this terror attack in London? Because somebody was persuaded by ISIS to do that. And people are, are, are being, are being, are being, are being uh, manipulated, are mesmerized into following people, following their spirit. They, be, they have the transference of spirit, and they are, they are captivated. And you don't have to be together. You could be distanced apart. But once you, there is some connection, there, once there is, a, there is a connection through some form of medium, words, words are not just words, eh? 
And when you type a message or you log on, on or go online and you communicate, where you want to reading the spirit of that thing, the spirit of the letter is affecting your mind. The spirit behind those words, those words came from somebody's thoughts. Somebody's spirit put those words there. Amen. And when you go online and you click here and you click and you click there, you have no clue what is happening in your mind. Subliminally, you're being mesmerized below the threshold of consciousness and you find yourself captivated and you find yourself inclined into those directions and not realizing it because that's the strategy of Satan to hit you unaware or attack you unaware. So you're swayed some, some, somehow or the other, you're swayed in that area. Listen, our young generation today are so vulnerable, are so vulnerable to demonic spirits and devils. It's amazing when you think about all the, the, all, all the things that are available to them. We have to really pray hard. Pray and build a wall and a hedge around them. And be careful about the cartoons and the books and the toys and the things and the electronic media they, they are associated with. You be very, very careful today. Because you'll be surprised to know what a child will come and tell you some things that you don't even know because you're never indulged into it. But they have been doing so. And that spirit already captivated their mind and they're living that kind of lifestyle. It's becoming part of their lifestyle and they're growing up with it. So that's all they know. We never knew those things when we were growing up. We had a sardine pan and a string. And we dragged that all over the place. We'll drag it, we'll drag it all over the place. So we don't know that. But they are so open to so many things because these are the last days, folks. These are the last days. So cults are prospering. Why? People follow, people follow, uh, they lose, uh, uh, people follow and lose their lives because they are swayed by the spirits. So it is important to choose your leaders very carefully and to be very selective in those who are leading your family or leading your children. Are you listening to me? Let me tell you something. One of the things you have to do is to pray for the teacher that is teaching your child in school. Pray for the school that your child is going to. Pray for the driver of that vehicle that is taking your children to school. And pray for the children that is in the class close to your children. You have to go through this thing and sift it out with a, with a fine tooth comb. Are you listening to me? And so, so if you don't do these things, you'll find yourself, whatever is interfering with that will hurt them and hurt you. So we are talking about the human spirit, not just uh, uh, your, 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 your spirit personality, but man in general. The human spirit is so vulnerable to the attacks of the spirit of the world. And not only that, the spirit of the world, because when the absence of the presence of God is in your life, you're vulnerable not only to the spirit of the world, but you're also out of control of your own spirit. Are you listening to me? So let me, let me show you a few things. You know... Um, you know, there's something like, like, for instance, every family, there's a family spirit. A family spirit. Think about it for a moment. Every family has a spirit, a special spirit within that family. All right? And uh, that spirit is dominating that family. That family is a certain way the family conducts life. Okay? Whether in church or in home. All right? And uh, children, children, school, the neighbor, the friends, the, you know... You have to watch children today. You have, as I said, watch how children are growing up in the home. Look at your home, for instance. How your child is growing up in your home, what environment you're creating for that child, and what, what kind of manifestation is coming out of you that child is picking up. Because your spirit as a mother is somehow being transferred to that. Your likeness, your choice, and everything is transferred to that child, so to the father. All right? So you have to be very careful what, what you do in the presence of your children because they are picking up, they're drawing from that. And you're creating an atmosphere and an environment in which you're raising your child. Now that environment will be compared in the school, in the neighborhood, with friends, who are, and, and it will either turn out to be rebellion or drugs, violence, murder, or it will turn out to be a very calm, godly spirit. It all depends on what you emanate from your life. The child is picking up so the child could compare when the child is in school. So, well, I was not brought up like this. When the child meets rebellion in school, the child will say, well, I never rebel. I never, my, 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 my mommy and dad never saw that with them. And, you know, you make comparison. 
But what is happening today is totally the opposite. You know, because children are exercising um, what they know. They're doing what they know because that's all the, that's the environment they are growing up in in the home. So when they go out there, they believe that's the way the world is out there. And it's a dog eat dog, and the lion is the only strongest beast in the in 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 in, in the uh, in, in, in the forest. So therefore, you want to go out there like a lion, and you want to make sure that nobody trample on you because you grew up in an environment that was very very rugged and rigid and rude and, and disrespectful. And therefore, when you go out there, you want to be able to dominate your turf. So what we have today, uh, we have children, we have young people today growing up. Um, um, involved in drugs and crime and all these stuff going on there because of the environment in which they live or growing up in. And all had to do with the human spirit. And you have to blame, who are you going to blame for that? You have to go back and blame the, blame the family spirit. So you have to, to blame the family spirit, you have to blame the home, the father and the mother, the parents. You see what it goes back to? And Moses had to deal with that. And we'll come to that. Moses had to deal with that in the wilderness. And so, Yes, and look at the school. Look at the school, and look what's going on in our school today. Bullying, huh? Like crazy. It's like crazy. And another thing too, what we need to design is our home group fellowship. You know, we we try that so many times. Home group fellowship is where you have an opportunity now to display the right kind of spirit and build the right atmosphere to raise your children. You know what will happen when you see your children, when your children see you praying and studying the Word of God and have a special time in prayer, and you have a study room, you have a Bible study. You, you know, when children see that environment, it will it will change their pers perspective and concept about growing up and but but life itself. You see, and this is why home groups is important. It, now, if you have a home group, now let, let me go. Uh, let me take a step a step further. Many times in the past, we have had home cell groups, and they turn out to be real real corrupt spiritually corrupt because we had home groups and we had cell groups and in the cell group you had leadership and the leadership was that start, started to do their own thing and soon and very soon in the cell group now you had where the leader influenced the group and the whole group had one kind of spirit and that spirit was opposing the spirit that is in the church family so you had separation and you had division so even in home cell group, leaders, you have to be very careful what kind of an influence you have over the followers and those who are in the group to make sure there is no contrary spirit. So when you pray, you, you, know why, you, you come together to pray, to seek God. You come together to, to build the body of Christ, to build each other's life and to edify each other's life. And so if the leader has a bitter spirit against the pastor and you have a cell group, Need I say anymore? Imagine the leader has a, a bitter spirit against somebody, or lead, let's say leadership in the church, and he or she is having a cell group home. Eventually, everything will be seen or conducted through that hurt. And there you have a transference of spirit. <laughs> I'm long, I'm, and this long enough to know that. All right? I'm as long as I know that. And you see things like manifest like anger, hate, pride, rebellion, all these things coming from the human spirit will be transferred. Getting people to side up with you, that spirit will transfer to them. And soon the whole group will turn against the pastor, turn against the leadership. And guess what? Let's start our own thing, boy. And you have a split. I'm not afraid of splitting. You know? I'm not afraid of split. You know why I'm not afraid of split? I understand who is responsible for that. And who, who is the author of that. Hmm? I strive to keep or endeavor to keep the bond of the spirit, the unity of the spirit. Anything that comes to divide, Satan is behind that. Spirit of the world. So you, would, you, would you like to follow a leader that is causing division in the church? Oh, come on, folks. You will never want to follow. If you're in the right spirit, you'll never want to follow the influence of anybody who is causing division in the church because you know where that spirit comes from. All right? Okay? Negative information, cutting down the pastor from one person to many, from one person to many. 
one person hurting can hurt many. So you have you, you got to have your hurt healed. And to have your hurt healed, you've got to have a humble spirit. And to have a humble spirit, you've got to see your heart as God sees it. Amen. And humble yourself before God and he will exalt you and bless you in due time. That's all it takes. There's nothing to be prideful about, nothing. So let's look at our first case in Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17. Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17. First case, case number one, court in order. We're all in the court, my Sister Marlon. I don't know if I say it right. Okay. Numbers chapter 11, verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that, watch it now, that they may stand there with thee. That they may what? As a pastor, how many are standing with me? Amen. That's what God wants. God will take the anointing and place it on you. You'll experience the anointing and the blessings of God. Because I tell you what, once you go by the word of God, it doesn't matter what people think. Amen. Watch this now. I like verse 7. And I will come down and talk with thee there. Where? In the tabernacle, in the house of God, in the church, in the house of God. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, Moses, and I will put it upon them. Notice that. Notice that. When you stand with your leader, you stand with the man of God, you're going to be blessed with the anointing. And it says here, and I'll put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. Because of the anointing upon you, you'll bear the burden of the people with the pastor, the leader. That's the purpose of the anointing. That thou bear it not thyself alone. Though that is so powerful. That is so powerful. So what is important is that you choose. He said to Moses, choose men from among you. Choose men from among you. So why he said that? Because God doesn't want us to have imported help. Because imported help is dangerous. What is imported help? Imported help is when people come from somewhere else. And we're not born in the ministry. And they come from other churches with different type of spirit, under different type of leadership, with different type of spiritual personalities. And they come into the church with that same concept and want to change things to suit that spirit. But no, when you have somebody that is from within you and among you who knows and understands your character, your integrity, and everything that goes with, when you have somebody who understands that, they run with your vision and defend the testimony and character and the vision of the ministry and stand with you and fight and contend for the faith because they have a heartbeat for the ministry. And guess what? Those who come from elsewhere will criticize you for doing that. Because you see, they want you to be like them. But God wants to anoint you and bless you because you are from among us. Select people from among you, not imported ministry, not imported. So watch this now. To prevent church from spreading up, you choose faithful men. When a man is touched by your ministry and touched by your anointing. Guess what happened? He'll be faithful to you all the way. All the way. Now let me say this here one time to make sure I cl I'm clear on this. Now sometimes where you are is not where you belong. Sometimes where you are is not where you belong. God wants you to grow. God wants you to mature. God wants you to be spiritual. God wants you to be focused on Him. And if you're where you are, you're drying up. You listen to me now. Wherever you are and you're drying up, God doesn't want you to stay. God doesn't want you to stay in the wilderness and dry up. God doesn't want you to pitch a tent and stay in the wilderness and dry up. God wants you to humble yourself and find a good leader and a good church and grow spiritually. Get off from any church that's drying you up. Any church that's drying you up, get off from that. And I say that with no apology. If you feel like you're drying up here, 
The door swings on both sides. But if you say you're drying up here, there's something wrong with your brain. Okay? But if you're in a church and you're drying up, you need to make a decision. Make a decision. And that's another story by itself. So he says, choose faithful men. Okay? So when a man is touched by your spirit, man is touched by your anointing, touched by your ministry, he will be with you all the way. So that, and he said that they may stand with you. So the only way to build a solid church is to choose men who will surround you and see, you, see with you eye to eye the vision and not their own things so, then we'll, so that the person will not blackmail you. Okay? Moses said, choose men. God said to Moses, God said, choose men from among you. When God call a man, watch this. When God call a man, he called people to surround that man. He calls people to surround that man. Out of those people, he chooses leaders. Okay? So Jesus said the same thing to the 70. <clears throat> you know, he had 12 disciples. You remember that, right? Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7. Matthew 6 verse 7. All right? Are we back there? Are we following? Matthew chapter 6 verse 7. Now I want you to pay attention to back there. Okay? Quickly. Okay, Ma let's go. Ma Mark, Mark, sorry. Mark chapter 6 verse 7. Maybe my mistake there. Is it, am I correct now? <laughs> Mark 6. <laughs> Mark 6 7. And he called unto them the 12. Listen, he called unto the 12 and began to send them forth by two and two and give them power over unclean spirit. Now, remember these men, they were not saved yet. You remember Jesus told Peter, he said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. But you see, what makes a difference in your life is the spirit of God. All right? And he called the 12 and he began to send them for two by two. Why two by two? Because agreement. Because of agreement, right? All right? The 12 disciples. So he, so he anointed them. He put his spirit upon them. 12 disciples. But also did on the 70. Look at Luke chapter 10 verse 1. The 70 was appointed. Okay? He said, and after these, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where, uh, whither he himself would come. All right? So he sent them as a foreigner with the anointing. Just as like John the Baptist came as a foreigner with the anointing. All right? Amen? Amen? So the anointing can be transferred. It can be transferred. And intercessors and workers, you know, can carry out the same mission, you know. You, you see why? You see, watch this. When you are intercessor, your leader, your evangelist or whatever, and you're under the, the, le under the leadership anointing, your apostolic anointing, that apostolic anointing energizes you. You're going under the apostolic anointing. You're sent under the apostolic, apostolic anointing to do the work. You are going to be successful. If you cut yourself off and try to do it by yourself, you're going to dry up. You must go under the anointing to do any work. So you must have a church base. You must have a, a launching platform. You must have an assemble assembly, you must come under an umbrella, you must be under the preached word of God, under the anointing of God, worship and fellowship, so when you go out there, the same anointing, I said the anointing of God will destroy the yoke and re remove the burdens off the shoulders of people, because the anointing destroys the yoke. Now look at Numbers chapter 13, okay, and um, let me show you how a church can go into siege in a quick, short space of time. In Numbers chapter 13 verse 26, all right, verse 26. Watch this very carefully. We're going to read from verse 26 and go through it. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of Israel, children of Israel, into the, unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back a word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. We talk about the return of the, 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 the 12 spies. Remember that, right? The return of the 12 spies. And they told him and said, We came. Unto the land whither thou sent us. Sent us. And surely it flowed in milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Verse 27. Verse 28. Watch this now. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And look what he saw. Verse 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of, uh, of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Now these, this is the report came back from the ten spies. But listen to Joshua and Caleb. All right? 
Joshua and Sister Marilyn's son. And Caleb settled the people before Moses. Notice Moses there, the people there, and Joshua and Caleb there. And Caleb settled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and, po and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Now, he knew what God promised him. All right? But, when, but the man that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for, we, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we, we saw. If you notice how many times they say, we saw, we saw. We saw it, we saw in it, our, the men we saw in are great, of great stature. Verse 33. And, they, and, and there we saw the giant, or the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Oh my goodness. Watch this now. Now you see the report of Caleb and the report of the ten spies. Two different kind of spirit. All right? Are you with me? Two different kind of spirit. So the spies, the, the ten spies had a negative spirit and two had a positive spirit. And there was a transference of spirit that took place there. Okay? In verse 30, we see a spirit of faith. In verse 30, Caleb had a spirit of faith. And we see from verse 31 to 33, the spirit of fear. Okay, the transference of the spirit of faith and the transference of the spirit of fear. One fearful person can intimidate a lot of people. So the way you see yourself is the way the devil sees you. Look at what this is. Look what this is. And we were as grasshopper in our sight, and so we were in their sight. Okay, so how you see yourself? If you see yourself weak, the devil is going to see you weaker. If you see yourself strong in the Lord and doing exploit, that's how the devil is going to see you. Amen, folks. How you see yourself. All right? So, so here is the thing. Look at Numbers chapter 14 and verse 1 and 2. And watch how 10 people were able to transfer their spirit to how many? We'll see how, how many just now. Watch this. And the, all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would God that we had died in the land of Egypt in other words say better we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in the wilderness in other words better we had died in Egypt or we died in the wilderness rather than go there and face, the devil, face these uh, giants notice something here notice, what, notice something here they wept all night, and ten men could fill a whole nation with a spirit of unbelief. Ten men transferred a spirit of unbelief. Think about that. Ten men, three million people, the spirit of unbelief. Ten men and about three million people. My goodness. Negative, evil spirit of unbelief. Unbelief is broken. How do you break the spirit of unbelief? It is broken by prayer and fasting. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus talked about that. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, verse 24, verse 24. Look at verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, if thou, look what he said. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Look at verse 24. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And to, to drop down to verse 29, to make a long story short. And he said unto them, this kind came forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. When well, you know the story there, the disciples tried to cast out the, 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 demon, the devils from the little boy, from the boy, and he could, they, they couldn't do it, right? And he came to Jesus, and Jesus did it. And he said, well, this kind goeth not by, but by fasting and praying. All right, here is the thing. Here is the thing. Unbelief is broken by fa fasting and prayer, all right? Now notice something in Numbers chapter 14, verse 2. The spirit of unbelief did not exist in the people till those 10 spies came back with an evil report. 
it did, wasn't existing. They were all ready and willing and ready to follow Moses and Aaron, ready to go possess the land. So Moses sent them to spy it out, came back, when they came back, they, all of them now heard the bad report and the spirit of unbelief was transferred. And they all were saying some stuff, how they want to die, just like Elijah when he was under the juniper tree. Oh God, take me now. Fear and unbelief. Are you following what I'm saying? Transfer the spirit. So see, watch something. Watch something. You will always know a servant of God. You'll always know a child of God, a person of God. A person who loves God and serving God have a, 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 a you know, they're, they're servant-like. They want to serve God and they want to serve God because they believe God. They believe in what they're doing in serving God. Watch this. If you have the right spirit of God, if you have the right spirit of God in you, God calls you a servant. If you have the wrong spirit in you, you know what he calls you. Look what he says in verse 24. Same chapter 14. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein, wherein to he went. And his seed shall possess it. Why? You know what? God called him a servant because of the kind of spirit he had. The spirit of a servant. Amen. We are not lords over the things of God. We are servants. Amen. We are servants. You must serve with the spirit. So he had a different spirit. He had, a, a, he, he had followed God fully. He had a different spirit. And his seed shall possess and inherit that. So Joshua had the right spirit, and guess what? His seed, his children, possessed the same spirit. Um, Caleb. Amen. Amen. Joshua too. Joshua, both of them had the same spirit. But the, the, the man who was more active here was Caleb. Are you following me? Caleb was active here now, but Joshua took over, and he started to act. Because God said, I'll be with you as I was with Moses. Understand this, church. The spirit of God makes a difference in our lives. Amen. 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 And when you're talking to somebody, you can do it like this. The Spirit of God make a difference in your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and you're blessing them at the same time. The Spirit of God makes a difference in your life, folks. This is why God says Caleb had a different spirit. And when the Spirit of God is in you, you are servant. Servanthood. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Now let's go a little further. Okay. Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 24. Joshua 2 and 24. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord had delivered unto, into our hands all the land. You see it? You see it? Joshua now, now they got the land. Truly the Lord had delivered, delivered into, our, into our hands all the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. You see? How many people lose out, they lose out on that because they believe ten spies? They believe and, and receive the transfer of the wrong spirit, and they all were destroyed. But you know what? Those who believed Joshua and Caleb and had the right spirit and a servant of God with the right spirit, they made it through and said, look, 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 look. The Lord has delivered the land just as he promised. And look at the inhabitants. They have to be in subjection to us. We have more power than them. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. The spirit of God in you makes a difference. The spirit of God in you. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So this is the result of Joshua and Caleb's spirit. The Lord has delivered all the land. Not just part, but all the land. And somebody needs to tell that to the, to the, the Arabs and to the, the Palestinians today. All the land belongs to the Jewish people. Amen. Amen. The Lord has delivered all the land. The enemies are faint-hearted because of us. The enemy will flee if we have the right spirit. The enemy will flee if we have the right spirit. Because when you submit to God... And you resist the devil, he will what? Flee from you. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. You see, your life is like a TV screen. Your life is like a TV. You're sending signals. You're sending signals, signals. Your spirit are giving out signals. People pick up on those signals. Lives are touched. You see, you're like a TV set, giving, out, giving your signal to one another. Something is emanating from you, and somebody's watching you. We learned that yesterday. The kings were watching Daniel, and they saw something in Daniel that he had an excellent spirit. 
A man who purposed in his heart and believed in his God and was confidence in his, with confidence in his God and dependency on his God. He drew the lines in the right places and was able to resist all the temptation. He put up a resistance and they saw some things in him. His humility, his spirituality, and his faith. And these men, these, these kings, they were able to come over on his side. Somebody's watching you, folks. Somebody's watching you. And you, you can either bring glory to God or you can run them from, from God. Okay? If you, if, you pick, if you pick up the right spirit, you, if you, if you, pick, you can pick up the right spirit in people, you can pick up the wrong spirit in people. You can watch it and you can discern it. Amen. You can tell someone, somebody come to church vex, man. You could t tell when some men come to church and they get food or breakfast. <laughs> Amen. Look at, look at uh, Hosea chapter 4 verse 9. Hosea chapter 4 verse 9. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doing. Like people, like priests, transference the spirit. Be careful who your leader is. Be careful who follows you. Amen. I am, you're like a TV set, giving signal. If you, pick, if you pick them up, your lives will change, all right? So watch this now. You have to be able to choose your right. Because like people like priests. Amen? This church is a church where love never fails. Amen? No matter what you do, God will always love you and so do we. Amen? Praise the Lord. So the transfer of the Spirit is such a real thing. Moses to the 70. King Ahab, you know, had a lying spirit. Hmm? He transferred a lying spirit to his leaders. Lying spirit. Elijah transferred a double portion of his spirit to Elisha. Jesus to his disciples, the 70s. All right? Now look, look, look at something. So how many of you would like, how many know, do you, let me ask you something. You see, it's how you see things and how you perceive things. You know, you have people who say, you know, my pastor is not anointing. I'm not anointed. There is no anointing. I do all the time. So people say there is no anointing in the church. I remember one time, somebody, somebody said, I'm not going to that church. There is too much anointing. How do you please people when you have too much anointing? <laughs> say, too much anointing. I ain't going. And somebody said, well, that church has an anointing. Let me tell you something. Something wrong with the person themselves. But I tell you one, I tell you something. You know, if you believe the prophet, you'll receive the reward of the prophet. If you believe what is being preached to you, you'll receive the reward. Amen? Amen? And you see a word coming to you in sincerity and in truth. And God wanted to work on your life. On whom he loveth, he chastised. He loved you tenderly. He'll be tough with you. He'll be rough with you. He'll be tender with you because he wants to mold you. He don't want you to be no, you know, you know, no um, run over. He wants you to be tough so you can end your hardness as a good soldier. And good soldiers take tough training. And if you want tough training, you're in the right place. Amen? Amen? Amen. That message wasn't easy this morning, you know. Huh? That wasn't easy. That is hard. That's cutting. Huh? I think it cuts so much, some people stay with the bandage right now home. They're, they're wrapping up the bandage. They're banding the wound home right now. You see? But they'll, they'll get healed. They will get healed. Pray for them. All right? They'll get healed. You know? I'm glad you're with me. I'm glad you're poor. I'm glad you're poor. The poor you have with you always. I'm glad you're poor. <laughs> God bless. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Watch this. Genesis 41. Genesis 41 and verse 8. Watch this now. Now we go to some really good stuff here now. Some practical stuff. I laid a foundation. Let me go some practical stuff now. Now, Pharaoh, you remember when God sent Moses to Pharaoh? What happened to Pharaoh? Pharaoh was hardening his heart. Pharaoh had a Pharaoh. Pharaoh's spirit was troubled at one point in time. Now, now before, before, when, before, um, no, this is after. This is after. This is with Joseph. This is the Joseph, not with Pharaoh, Moses and Pharaoh. But Moses had his day with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh had his heart. Now, you know, Joseph was on a new Pharaoh, right? And watch this now. This Pharaoh now, had a dream. And this Pharaoh couldn't understand the dream. Just like Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, couldn't understand. God has a way of dealing with honest people, you know. Yeah? You know, God has a way of dealing with criminals. You always have somebody in the right place to deal with them. And so, so this, this, this Pharaoh now, a new Pharaoh on the scene, didn't understand everything about the old Pharaoh and about the church of Israel. And so, Pharaoh 
had a troubled spirit. Look at Genesis chapter 41, verse 7. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. This is after he had a dream. When he woke up in the morning, his spirit was what? How many of you ever wake up in the morning and you had, you had a dream? You dream about Pastor Kenrick and you wake up and your spirit troubled. I mean, I mean, wait, where is he? Is he here? Okay. <laughs> You dream about something, you wake up in the morning, your spirit is troubled. All right? All right? So he woke up next morning after the dream, his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for the magician of Egypt, all the wise men and all the intellectuals and all the elite men of Egypt. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them to, unto Pharaoh. So here's it. The same thing happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He called for the magician and all the educated people and all people good in literature and all these things. Called them to interpret the dream, and they couldn't. But there was somebody in the scene there, Daniel, just as it was somebody there who was in the jail and everything else, Joseph. Amen. And Joseph had done something before that it, the butler and the baker, they didn't, they didn't know what he did, right? And one got hanged and one got, 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 got back his job. All right? So here's the thing. Fear of a troubled spirit because of the dream. And one man brought that. Trouble upon the whole nation. That one man's trouble came upon the whole nation. This is why you have to pray for your prime minister and pray for the those in authority. Because if they're troubled, the whole nation will be troubled. And when you watch all these Nebuchadnezzars in parliament, and you watch all these pharaohs in parliament, you have to pray for them. That somebody will give them some interpretation of what it is to really lead right and righteousness. And that comes from the church. Hello, hello. Look at another thing you need to understand. Not, not in your spirit can be trouble. Your, also, your spirit can be angry. But let me even say this right now. Folks, try to avoid doing things to trouble people's spirit. Okay? And you try to avoid people having to trouble your spirit because you have to bring your spirit into subjection. You have to be able to control your spirit. And the only way you can control your spirit is to ensure that the spirit of God is in you. And when the spirit of God is in you, the fruit of the spirit is self-control. Very important. In Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. Exodus chapter 6 verse 9. Let's go there. And Moses spake unto the church of Israel. Now watch this now. Watch this. Moses spake unto the church of Israel. But they hardened, they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit for, and for cruel bondage. For anguish of spirit. What is the meaning of anguish? Anguish is severe mental or physical pain. All right? Of suffering. Something is causing you to suffer mentally, physically. Or, you know, you're suffering this, this emotional setback. Anguish in spirit. You're, ang you're anguished about certain things. That you're going through. Okay? In other words, shortness of spirit, impatience, anguish. And so the children of Israel, they hearken not unto Moses because, the word for means because, because of anguish of spirit. Now, now listen to me carefully. Impatience, say impatience. We from time to time are always impatient. Impatience. And when you are impatient, you become anguish in spirit. Understand that. When you become impatient, you become anguish in spirit. Because something is not working out how you want it, and you're anxious to get it done, or anxious to see it happen. Okay, this is why the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, everything through prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. So certain spirits are not demons. Okay? Not demons. You're dealing with, um, you're, you're dealing with, um, uh, 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 Deliverance here now. You need deliverance from certain things that affects your spirit. Okay? When you got saved, you know you got saved. But there are a lot of things you need deliverance from. Some habits you need deliverance from. The habits are not demonic. The habits are just wrong things you're doing. Okay? That's driven by your spirit, but you are acting it out. And so you want to get those things out of your spirit. Now watch this. So you've got to understand the difference. Don't blame everything. Demon possessed, demon possessed, demon possessed. You need to get rid of some of those things in your life. All right? And you, 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 you use certain things to do and we deal with that. In fact, let me tell you now, some things in life, all you need is the Word of God. The Word of God to change your attitude and behavior. All right? So certain spirits are not demon, demonic. You do not cast out a human spirit. So if, I, if, you have a, if something is wrong with you in your spirit, I, and I cast out a spirit, your body just drop dead? 
I cannot cast out the human spirit. The day you, I cast out your spirit from your body, you're dead. Yeah, anybody want to go to heaven now? <laughs> so there's certain qualities, there's certain, um, work, there's certain manifestation that, t- that takes place. Uh, in your spirit, certain, certain, certain ambition, certain drive, certain things that, that propels you based on the condition of your heart and your mind and what you're thinking on. Thoughts emotionally drives you and affects you and you behave in a certain manner. The human spirit, like that of anguish, is dealt with the word, is dealt with the word or with counsel. There's some things you go through in life, you need counseling. In a multitude of counsel, there is safety. When you take heed to the word of God, it will change your life. When you apply the word, it will change your life. It's something you work in you. It's a work you do in you. You work on yourself with the word of God. If you take the word of God and you work it, the word of God will work in you. All right? Amen? So notice, Moses spoke to them. Okay? In Exodus 6, he spoke to them. The human spirit, the human spirit, they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit for, and for cruel bondage. You know, the human spirit can also be jealous. Okay, jealous. Numbers chapter 5 and verse 14. Numbers 5 and fo- verse 14. I don't know if I give them that. Numbers 5 and 14. Did I give you all that? Huh? Let's go to Numbers 5 and verse 14. Back up a little bit. Hmm. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled. Then shall the man bring his wife to the priest. Da, 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 the point is there is a jealousy. Jealousy is a spirit. The point is what? Jealousy is what? So see the difference now. All right? See the difference now. Jealousy is a spirit. Now, the spirit of jealousy in, hum, in, 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 your, in your spirit, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with it? Don't cast it out. Jealousy is coming from your spirit. It's a spirit. The spirit of man is a spirit of jealousy. When you are jealous over somebody else's possession or somebody else's gift or talent or potential, when you are jealous, once you have that spirit, once you operate with that quality of spirit, that I mean, from your spirit, you're giving the enemy now a foothold. So what I'm saying, your spirit can be jealous. Your spirit can be anguish. Your spirit can be hardened. All these things are personal impact upon your spirit. When you do these things, now you're giving Satan legal access to you. And that's where the trouble is. So what you do, you have to shut the door on these things. And prevent yourself from being jealous. How are you going to prevent yourself from being jealous? You just love your brother and love when somebody, the Bible said, be faithful in another man's thing. And when you want to see people blessed and everything, you're not going to be jealous over people. If you have a loving, caring spirit, a compassionate spirit, you're not going to be jealous. Amen. It's when you lack the spirit of God, you lack the spirit of conviction, and therefore all these things start happening to your spirit. Your spirit becomes jealous. Your spirit. You see, you're blaming the devil for everything. You have to start correcting yourself. Amen. A spirit of jealousy. The people had that in them, in them, in them. So you deal with it, you, you don't cast it out. Moses had to deal with it. Moses didn't have to cast it out, he had to deal with it. Amen. So the human spirit can be Jealous, the human spirit can be hardened, the human spirit can be anguish. And we could go on and on and on. Trouble, jealous, uh, sorrowful, all these things. Okay? So, so Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 30, we see in chapter 2, verse 30. But uh, Sihon, king of Heshbon, uh, would not let us pass by, for the Lord thy God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate. That he might deliver him into the hands, into thy hands, and appear to him. So the spirit of man can be what? Hardened. God hardens Pharaoh's heart. And here we see God hardened the spirit of a man. Okay? Okay? Now there's a reason for that. There are reasons for that. Okay? 
So you deal with your hardened spirit with the what? The Word of God. The Word of God. For the Word of God breaks the rock. Look at Jeremiah 23, 29. The, the, the Word of God breaks the rock. The hardness of your heart is broken by the Word of God. Everybody understand that? Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So if your heart is like a rock, what's going to break it? The word of God. The word of God. So watch me, folks. Listen carefully today. You see why you need to come to church and hear the word of God? Hmm? So when you hear the word of God, it deals with your heart. God speaks to your heart with the word of God. You see, it's not necessarily casting out, casting out, casting out, casting out. It's receiving, taking in, taking in, taking in the word of God. So when the word of God comes in, these things go out. These things go out. Amen, 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 amen. And now you know why I like the word, right? Now you know why I like the word, all right? God took the word this morning and he hammered some people, right? That's what he did this morning, right? He hammered the word. To break up the rocky hearts, all right, who is hardening their hearts over and over again and going after things and neglecting Him. And God knows what to do, folks. He knows what to do. And I know, I tell you what, every time I preach, I say, Lord, I don't want to preach anything else but the Word of God. I don't want to preach anything but the Word of God. And the day I preach anything that is not in the Word of God, don't believe me. Take it and throw it away, all right? Everything I preach to you. You see how many times I quote the scriptures, I show you the scriptures because I want you to see it for yourself. The word of God speaks. I not, it's not here say or they say. It's what the word of God says. I'm merely doing the interpretation because the interpretation comes when you study to show yourself approved unto God. He gives you the revelation knowledge to bring part and depart to you. Amen? You study, you study, you research and you study, you research and you study and you seek. Study, research and seek. And God will prepare Give you whatever you desire. When you're praying, always ask, the Lord, use my pastor. Use him to minister to me. Lord, you know what I'm going through? Lord, you show him. You put it in his spirit, Lord. Show it to him, Lord, so you can bring it to me so I could understand what you want to say to me. I want to hear your voice through my pastor's voice. I want to hear you speak to me, Lord. I want you to give me a word. Lord, when I read something in the Bible, let my pastor come and confirm it from the pulpit. Amen. Some people have no confirmation because they don't read the Bible. But when you read the Bible and you hear, listen, man, nothing elevates your faith that when you read something home and you come in church and you hear it preached to you, nothing elevates your faith like that. This is why you've got to spend time in the Word of God. The Word is a hammer. The Word is a, it breaks up anything and sets you free. Think about that and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right? And so not everything is bad with the human spirit, okay? It is, it is it, you know, it is wrong to receive wrong signals. But it's God, it is God who wants to influence your life. God wants to influence you by His Holy Spirit, okay? It's good to be influenced by good people because good people can influence you. You can have a good spirit. Let me say this here right now. You know, some people are sweeter by nature than others are by grace. That's a mouthful right there. You meet somebody who, they're not saved, but they have such a sweet spirit. And you meet somebody who is saved. And boy, you realize they need the grace of God. They're living under grace, but they need the grace of God. Because the spirit is not sweet at all. Hmm? Touch the person next to you say, do you have a sweet spirit? Do you have a sweet spirit? Hmm? Who wouldn't want to stick around a sweet spirit? Tell me this. Huh? Who, who wouldn't want a wife with a sweet, sweet, sweet spirit? Who wouldn't want, want a husband with a sweet spirit? Yeah? Who, which pastor wouldn't want members with sweet, sweet spirit? That's why I love this song. Sweet spirit, sweet, sweet anointing. Amen? Sweet, sweet anointing. The very presence of God. See, when the, pre when the presence of God is in your life, you can't help but be sweet, man. You'll be sweet. Amen? You'd be sweet, right? Come on, five there, Mara. That's a sweet five, right? Come on, good one again. <laughs> so here, here's, what, here's what Paul said. You know, Paul says, imitate me. Not everybody have a bad spirit. Paul says, imitate me. Imitate me. Yeah? There's that which is correct and that which is right. 
is all about behavior, character lifestyle, lifestyle evangelism, lifestyle Christianity. Once you have a good lifestyle Christianity, everybody's going to be coming around you. You know, you know, anything sweet attracts. Amen. Anything sweet attracts. Amen. Glory to God. This is why I have her. Amen. I was very sweet. <laughs> I was very sweet. She knows that. She knows that. So Paul says, imitate me. You know, pick up, he said, in other words, he said, pick up everything. Everything I'm teaching you. Pick it up. Learn from me. Watch how I suffer. Watch how I, in him I live and move and have my being. Watch how I, I am persuaded that he's able to keep whatever I commit unto him against that day. Watch how I life I live. It's not I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Watch and you'll see. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And on and on and on and on. You learn from everything from your teacher, your pastor, your leader. He's giving you to build you and to help you. Amen. And you know, you as a leader, you're going through stuff and nobody knows. Nobody knows because you know what? You want the right spirit to emanate from you. You have to, you have to learn how to keep things down. How to put things under your feet and bring things into subjection so you can maintain the right attitude. So you can deliver to the people what they need to hear and learn and see in you. And then you go before God and you kneel before God and say, Lord, I poured all your pain before him. And you went through your pain and everything and nobody knows but God knows. And he who sees in secret rewards you openly. Come give the Lord a hand of praise, man. Hmm? Uh oh, and I'm so sweet with you, I'm going to have to stop there. It's half past seven. And I know you're enjoying it, eh? <laughs> but I'm going to stop there. It's half past seven. All right? So we'll continue this again. We want to continue this? And then we're going to talk about laying out hands and how to keep yourself pure and how to lay hands and who to lay hands on and who not to lay hands on. All right? When you go visitation and people want you to pray for them and people demon possessed want you to pray for them. Somebody call me and say, Pastor, I'm having a lot of trouble, a lot of trouble. Pastor, I don't know how to handle it. Pastor, I want you to, I want you to talk. I want, I, want, I want you to talk to me. Tell, tell me what to do. I say, okay, come to church Sunday morning. I say, come to church Sunday morning. That was Saturday night. I say, come to church. Come to church in the morning. They want me to talk to them on the phone and I'm studying Saturday night. I say, come to church Sunday morning. You know they didn't come this morning? No, what they want to come now? They want to come Wednesday morning. So I spend another hour. Two hours to, to, to see. Every time I think of Moses, I say, Lord, you have to be nice to Moses. You really have to be nice to Moses. <laughs> you have to be nice to Moses. It's not easy. Dealing with people is not easy. If I take you on, I'll go mad. No, no. You are lovely. You are awesome. You're the best thing that happened to GRLM. You are faithful. You're always coming. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, you're always coming. Thank you so much. You are my encouragement. Give yourself a good God bless you right now. And you know you're guaranteed when you come here, you'll learn something. You will learn. You know why? Because I don't want to go to a mechanic who doesn't uh, study uh, new vehicles and how to fix new vehicles on all the carburetor when you have fuel injectors now. You want somebody who is, you don't want to go to a lawyer who study no, new laws. And you don't want to be under a pastor who is not spending time with God. Alright? You feel safer, you feel more secured. You feel like you're hearing from God when you know you're getting a fresh word from God. Every time you come here, you get a fresh word from God. Amen, folks? Pray for your leader. Pray for your pastor. Pray for all the leadership in this church. Pray for all the leaders in this ministry. Pray for them. Let's all stand in the presence of God. And lift your hands and thank God. Say, Lord, help me to bring my spirit in, under the subject, un, into subjection to your Holy Spirit, Lord. And all the spirit of anguish and jealousy and hardness and, and hatred and, and hastiness and all these things. Help me to get rid of all of these things through your word, through your word, through your word. I can deal with all these spirit. Let's let God minister to you. Those of you watching tonight, wherever you are, you can be the man God wants you to be, the woman God wants you to be, the person God wants you to be. If you'll bring yourself into a place of understanding where the Spirit of God can reveal the things of God to you and God's Spirit can show you what's in you 
As the psalmist says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart today. See if there be any wicked ways in me, Lord, and teach me thy ways. Teach me thy ways and lead me in the paths of righteousness. Oh God, this is your prayer today. So I want to encourage all of you that are watching me today. You can have a right spirit, a clean spirit before God. And God can bless you and use you to bring people across on your side and to bring glory to his name. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for this teaching session. I pray, God, that the knowledge imparted tonight will help us to grow spiritually, Lord, and to check ourselves every day and see how we behave with our husbands, our wives, our children, our loved ones, and see, Lord, let us help us to check our spirit every time we speak, Lord. Help us to check before we utter a word. Help us to check what is emanating from us, what our children are seeing, what our children are leaving home with, what the husband leaves home with, what the wives leave home with. God, help us to see the right spirit, the right thing emanating from us, Lord, so we'll be, we'll be fervent in the spirit, Lord, and we live with that glory of your presence and radiation of your presence in our lives. And Lord, we'll commune with you every day. Holy Spirit, thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. You're always there to show us and say, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and praise him, people. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit. Your presence, Lord. All right, will you just, just pray for somebody right now that they bring their spirit under the subjection, into subjection to the Holy Spirit right now so the Spirit of God can reveal to you and to others the things of God and show you what's in your spirit that you need deliverance from and you need a word of God to correct. Remember that. You need a word of God to correct your spirit. The word of God to correct your spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. I worship you. I need you, Lord. I, I need you. I need you every hour. I need you. I need you every hour, Lord. I need you. Every hour. I need you. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Bless me now, my Savior. Lord, I come to Thee. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need You, Lord. Every hour I need Thee. Oh, bless me now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sister Devika, will you use my sister in prayer and ask for a blessing on the offering tonight? Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you, O oh God, tonight, my God. Thanking you, O oh God, for the word that you just heard, my God. Thanking you, thanking you, Lord, for speaking to us, O oh God, that where we can bring our spirit to subjection to you, my God. Father, we thank you for this word, O oh God, that we will apply to our lives, O oh God. And every day, Lord, we will examine ourselves and our ways and our attitude towards you, my God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that as you open our eyes, O oh God, and open our spirits, O oh God, to receive from you, my God. We give you thanks and praise and honor and glory, my God. And Father, as I ask you, O oh God, to take us to our very homes, O oh God, you will take us safely, my God, in the highways and the byways, O oh God. You will protect us, O oh God, as we come coming up, oh God. Everything that is being set and done, oh God. Every 
item, everything that we has, oh God, prayer meetings, everything that is set, you will, oh God, take control, oh God, and you will bring us back here at the appointed time, oh God. Father, as we ask you to touch, as we ask you to bless the offering, oh God, we ask you to multiply, oh God, the hands, oh God, that, that give, Lord, you'll continue to bless, uh, and that you will continue to pour in, oh God, that you will, we will have to give unto you, my God, for the furtherance of your kingdom. We thank you for it in no other name, but in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a good hug and say, I want to transfer my sweet spirit to you. Amen. God bless you. Stay sweet in the spirit. We love you wherever you are. God bless you. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. It won't be long again. Jesus is coming soon. Live for him. We love you. Have a good night. Don't forget the offering. You just... Oh, oh, oh.